course, we have more lying from this White House when it comes to the NFL protests. This time, Vice President Mike Pence wasted thousands of dollars yesterday when he, of course, left a game involving the uh, Colts and the 49ers. So here's the deal. Okay. The Colts yesterday unveiled a statue to uh, Peyton Manning, and so the former governor of Indiana wanted to be there supposedly for that. Mm. But then, of course, when several members of the San Francisco 49ers took a knee, you know, the team that has taken a knee uh, constantly, even when Colin Kaepernick was there, well, he was so disgusted by this that he tweeted out that he had to leave the game because he cannot honor anyone that, that disgraces America, disgraces the flag. Here's his tweet, quote, I left today's Colts game because POTUS and I will not dignify any event that disrespects our soldiers, our flag, or our national anthem. Then, of course, Donald Trump his preferred method, he tweeted this. I asked VP Pence to leave stadium if any players kneeled disrespecting our country. I am proud of him and second lady Karen. Now, here's a little problem there. Donald Trump, excuse me, Mike Pence, they told the press pool that was traveling with him <laughs> not to leave the van because they were not going to be at the game for very long. And let me help you all out. They flew from Las Vegas to Indianapolis just so he could pull this stunt because he was going to Los Angeles for a fundraiser. So here's the deal. The fundraiser was at 6.30 in LA. <laughs> so he would have had to leave the game early anyway just to make the fundraiser. Now, let me just illustrate this without a map. <laughs> Las Vegas is over here. LA is right here. Indianapolis is over here. So we flew from here to here to come back here. The estimate, now it gets even better. The Secret Service <coughs> had to essentially shut down the entire stadium. They had to actually check bags. They had to go through all the security procedures because the vice president was in an NFL stadium. Also, he could stand there with his wife, put his hand over his heart, and then tweet, I left the game early. The early estimate that it cost taxpayers a quarter of a million dollars for this stunt by Vice President Mike Pence. And that's what it is, a stunt, a PR stunt, and we're going to call it is, we're going to call him out and Donald Trump, who have no problem wasting money, but I thought they were fiscal conservatives. <laughs> yeah. Now, players from different teams also uh, protested across the NFL yesterday, except the Dallas Cowboys. You know why? Because their owner, Jerry Jones, he has said nobody will disrespect the team, the flag on this team. Everybody will be standing. Sean King is tweeting that now seven NFL teams, he's heard from players from seven NFL teams saying that they will be ordered to stand and not have any protests whatsoever. Now, CBS Sports reported on yesterday that 40, full, former 49ers quarterback Colin Kaepernick said he would try out for any team in the NFL. He would do so, uh, he said, in a private workout or not. He also was quoted as saying he would stand during the national anthem. Mm, but a little bit later, <coughs> they backed off of that, saying that the reporter never actually talked to Colin Kaepernick about that very issue, that he was simply commenting on previous reports that also did not quote Colin Kaepernick. Now, Colin Kaepernick retweeted uh, a tweet sent out by his girlfriend saying that he never had that conversation with anybody, but he also tweeted this, a quote from British Prime Minister Winston Churchill that said, quote, a lie gets halfway around the world before the truth has a chance to get its pants on. Now, we also are seeing uh, the first black, the first protest in the National Hockey League. On Saturday, Tampa Bay Lightning forward J.T. Brown raised his fist, although he stood during the playing of the National Anthem during his team's game. Brown, who helped fund the relocation of Confederate statue in Tampa, says he is not afraid of any backlash and that he will continue to be vocal on issues affecting minorities. Huh. All right, folks. I want to get right to it uh, with our panel here. i got some other stuff I want to show you. But Eugene Craig III, Republican strategist, CEO of Eugene Craig Organization, Law Victoria Burke, political analyst and writer at NBC Black, Will Jawando, former Obama White House official, uh, who's also running for, what are you running for, city council? What are you running for? County council. Mm -hmm. Count, same, county council, city council. <laughs> one, one of them councils, one of the councils. Uh, all right, so talk about cheap stunt. Now, now here, here they just fired.
got rid of yeah. of the housing secretary, well, excuse me, health secretary for using private charters. We've got Manu Manukin spending 800 grand using military planes. Yep. You've got the interior secretary using private jets. Did I miss anybody else? Uh, and, yeah, everybody. I mean, and, I mean. and now we have <laughs> the vice president, solely for a cheap political stunt, who flies from Vegas to Indianapolis. Vegas is only a hop, skip, the it's jump a, from Los a, Angeles. It's a half hour flight on any type of plane. But we fly to Indianapolis, middle of the country, for the cheap stunt and yep. then fly to California. What else do you got? <laughs> they can't pass anything in Congress. They can't get anything yeah. done. You've got a president who, to quote Senator Bob Corker, it's basically a, an adult daycare center at the White House. They don't have anything else. And the Republicans are really good at messaging race, at That's messaging good. division. Right, and what does this do? It puts it puts the, it basically tries to say, you know, African Americans are not patriotic. You yep. know, I get to come in here and, and run that and run that narrative and then fly out. Yeah, the <laughs> I mean, that's that's all they got. What yeah, else yeah. they have? Yeah, it, I've always said that Donald Trump wasn't a fiscal conservative, any type of conservative, and this is this 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 puts him on front street display. I mean, the fact <laughs> that, you know. When we're running a twenty trillion dollar debt, we're running a massive deficit. You decide to burn a quarter million dollars that could be spent at on least, that litany, at, at least. least at minimally. That's not counting the the local yeah. police details, not right. counting right. the Secret Service details, it's not counting all the economic factors that went to effect because you know extra three hours to just get into the stadium. Right. Um, you know, when you decide to light that money on fire to make a statement, to make a race-based, political race-baiting statement because you have failed at everything else that you're doing, it's absolutely, it, it, it's, it's, it's ludicrous. Here's the problem. It's a race-based statement. You're wasting taxpayer money. But Pence, you know, who's supposed to be the fiscal conservative, if he's the adult in the administration, that's well, questionable. Well, say, I'm not doing that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And if you want to be president next, if you think, if you know, you Republicans are going to have your conclave and you think kick Trump out and, and primary him, you got to have Republicans that are going to step up and say you can't do this stuff. And, and I just don't understand why they keep doing, <laughs> they keep falling in line. In, in doing that. Now, well, knowing he, he, what we but, know but, now uh, about Jerry Jones and all that, <laughs> this is probably some coordination here to say. Oh, no, 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 first of all, there's no doubt. Right. I mean, Donald Trump said he called Jerry there Jones right. multiple times after the last protest. Jerry Jones is doing the bidding of okay. Donald Trump. Absolutely. And because he's the most powerful NFL owner, Jerry Jones, the owner of the Cowboys, is also leading the charge and is causing all the other owners as well to say, okay, Jerry did it, now we're going to follow his lead. Right. Now, here's what's interesting. I have yet to see Donald Trump or Mike Pence retweet this, y'all. The Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America yesterday released their poll of more than 8,000 military veterans. You know, Trump, the people who actually put a uniform on to serve the country. <laughs> okay? Didn't, Check this out. Didn't run. 39% of the vets from those wars said they would not watch NFL games because they disagree with the protests. 26% said they would keep watching and attending the NFL games. But, okay, that ain't the big, uh, the big one as well, okay? That's whatever. That's watching the games. Do you agree with the President Trump's response to the protest? 43% agree. 48% disagree, okay? Now, I don't know why we don't have the other most important stat here, but let me go ahead and read it, folks. 62%. 62% of the veterans who were polled said the players had a right to protest. 98% right. of the veterans there affirmed the First Amendment. That, yeah. that, that, no, no, who cares about them watching? They flat out yep. said, 62%, Eugene, said players have a right to to protest. Let me tell you something. So my conservative buddies, my conservative friends, the same folk that when it comes to the Second Amendment, their argument is time and time again, we don't want to legislate our constitutional right. We don't put we don't put our constitutional right to opinions. Um, I agree with these vets. You know, the, the players have a right to protest. The First Amendment is the First Amendment. And, and, and the First Amendment does not waver or whim to the opinions of the White House or the Vice President. Yeah, but it's not just about, of course, the Constitution. It's about the fact that this is the total avoidance of the issue of police brutality. Right. It is. They do not want to discuss that because, of course, it's a big loser when you have people on video getting shot in the back yeah. and getting shot, you know, sitting, reaching for their wallet, Philando mm -hmm. Castile. So it's kind of like that discussion cannot happen. And quite frankly, what now should happen is these players should decide 
that they want to assert their authority yeah. and and really demonstrate who's really in charge of the NFL. <laughs> okay, and to me, what that takes is some sort of real group effort to defy exactly what Jerry Jones and, and these owners are trying to make them do. Listen, I I, I think you know what we're going to come, what we're going to have see happen in the NBA in about a week or so. Right. Um, right. You know, <laughs> where where folk are pretty much told their owners and Adam, Sil you know, Silver, you know, I, you know, you can you think you want to punish us for for kneeling? Right. But I think that should happen. You know, it was but, just two but, folks but, together but, in the NFL. But I need people to understand what is at play here. What this is is Donald Trump and Vice President Mike Pence pushing the buttons of white racial resentment. Absolutely. That, that, that's it, all this is right. about. This, this has nothing. strategy. That's all this is. <laughs> right. This is how do we keep ginning up our white base right. uh, to, show, to show their anger at, oh, how dare you millionaire black players. Right. How dare you question the issue right. of police brutality. Right. They don't want to deal with that. Uh, Mike Pence, as a matter of fact, I tweeted this this morning. I want to see the reporters in Dallas. Ask Jerry Jones, what, what is your comment about the 10 page memo the players sent NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell? Jerry, what are your thoughts on mass incarceration in the Dallas Fort Worth area? Yeah. Yeah. Jerry, why don't you, let's talk about right. incidents involving cops and people in Fort Worth and Arlington, okay. and also they're in Bulk Springs, yeah. a suburb of Dallas, also the city of Dallas. I mean, Je I, see, Jerry, I got a house in Dallas. Oh, yeah. See, I, I'm aware of what's happening in Dallas in all these cases, and Jerry Jones has said nothing. And Jerry Jones is saying, and saying, if y'all, any of y'all protest, I'm gonna sit you on the bench. And they will and say nothing. See, and they will say nothing. Here's the deal. I would love to see. I would love to see Jerry <laughs> go on the field and call and say, oh, Dak. Ezekiel, Dez, <laughs> and, uh, and all the other players, oh, they took a knee, put them on the bench. You have no team. Please do. No, if, there, there's, if there's one thing we can count on is those questions never being answered by Jer Jerry Jones. Oh. But the players can get into a position to pressure that conversation. In fact, in Jerry Jones' initial statement the night of the protest, mm -hmm. he said, oh, he was not going to say anything about right. Donald Trump's comments. And then he mentioned something about <laughs> equality <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. But that was nothing specific. <laughs> that's why the held up by his two players. I would like to see him get up from that kneel on himself. No, no but, that, but, that's, but that's, why, that's why when he took a knee, I knew it was a fraudulent knee. Of course, I mean, of course. people said, why aren't you giving Jerry Jones credit? I said, wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for yeah. it. Right. Now Here we it see comes. what the real deal is. Uh, and again, but I also, Lauren, I keep waiting. Where are the external groups I know, yeah. I know. standing with See, the players? This is I mean, I want to know when will the external groups in Dallas unleash protests this is where, at the Cowboys this, Stadium? Right. This is where corporate influence on these civil rights groups starts to rear its ugly head, okay? Because I think the corporate influence piece is the reason why you don't see, you know, it's like, Basically, color of change is it when it comes to Shit. financial independence and the ability to say anything you want, anytime you want. Tell AT&T, which has AT&T Stadium with Cowboys mm -hmm. play, right. to right. put pressure on Jerry by right. saying, hey, uh, right. I'm sorry. Yeah. Exactly. First Amendment rights. Right. right. Well, you know, one of the things I, I, one I, of the, I, I gotta go. The break. Days on TV One. I will never lie to you. Oh, my God. Roland Martin. He doesn't want to talk to us. He wants to ignore us. Uncensored. Hell no. no. That ain't gonna cut it, boo. Unapologetic. No, no, that, that is fundamentally false. You are wrong. Unfiltered. He wants an America where we all look alike. He ain't talking about black people. Unrelenting. You better go work out because you got to fight on your hands. News One Now with Roland Martin, weekdays at 7 a.m. on TV One.